This is the Shoe Stop. This enables you to switch water on or off at the press of a switch. The beauty of these is that you can actually locate them about two meters away from the actual valve which does the isolating. Or you can actually get an extension kit and you can have it up to six meters away. These don't actually use any electricity at all. These simply work by water pressure which is fed up these two tubes to the valve. When you press the switch, it will switch on or switch off the water supply. The valve itself looks like that. That is installed on the main incoming water supply. There are a lot of advantages to these switches in that they can be placed in almost any position. That means that you can locate this in your kitchen or in a downstairs bathroom. And when you need to isolate the water, you can simply switch it off like so. That is absolutely invaluable if you have old people or disabled people or even if you were going on holiday etc. You can switch the water off really quickly. A big problem with traditional stop taps is that they tend to get seized in the open position and when you do have a problem you need to isolate the water quickly you often find that the stop tap won't work. I think I paid £51 for this kit from Screwfix that includes the remote switch. If you don't want the remote switch, you just want the shoe stop stopcock on its own, that's about £28. The one thing that I'm not sure about with this kit is the reliability. I have looked online, some people have said that these are absolutely fantastic and other people have said that they are not reliable. So I'm not entirely sure if they are or they are not. Obviously if you check the reviews on Screwfix, they do all seem to be positive, so we do have to give this product the benefit of the doubt. I'll now show you how to install one of these, but obviously if you buy one, please follow the instructions to the letter. The first thing we're going to do is isolate the water supply. We can actually do this here because this stop tap is actually working. If this one is actually seized, you may have to go and isolate the water in the street. So we're going to count how many turns this takes to close it. That's half a turn, one, one and a half. Two. So it's almost two full turns to isolate that. Before we cut into this pipe, it's a good idea to drain down as much water as possible from the system. The best way to do that in most properties is to open the outside tap. We're going to fit the shoe stop about there. And once it's installed, you can actually rotate that round because it is on push fit fittings. This particular one is the 15mm push fit. You can also get 22mm and you can also get these with compression fittings instead of push fit. With this particular model we actually need to remove 34mm of the pipe. So we're just going to mark 34mm on there. 34mm is the amount of pipe that we need to remove but you will need some movement in the pipes in order to get the valve in. I think you're going to need about 85 millimetres of movement or so to get that in position. Most of the water should have now drained out of the system but I've just made this up quickly. That is a 15 millimetre push fit elbow then got an isolation valve that goes to a flexi. So we can actually use that, we can put that in the bucket. Once we've cut through there we can quickly push that on there and it will drain anything into the bucket. It doesn't actually matter if we get the floor wet in this area, but it's best to contain as much of the water as possible. In order to get the pipes light on, I'm just going to have to pull the pipe forwards out of the clips. We can then just give that a few turns. It's important when you use a pipe slice that you go in the correct direction. This one has an arrow on it.
There's a little bit of water in the bucket there, but the majority of it seems to have drained out through the garden tap. So we can now remove that. We might need that again later. So I'm now going to cut at the second cut mark. We now need to deburr both pieces of cut pipe. I'm just going to put a bag over there to stop any of the coffee debris dropping down the hole. And then I'm going to take a deburring tool and I'm going to use that to remove the burrs from the coffee pipe. That will deburr it internally and externally. Obviously I don't want the pieces of copper that are in that pipe going into the new stop tap. So I'm going to use this again. I'm just going to push that onto the top of the pipe there. So I'm now going to slowly open the stop tap. And then after a few seconds we can shut that back off again. And then we can remove the push fit fitting. Now what we need to do is take the shoe stop and shoe the direction of floors in the correct direction. I'm just going to push that on there. And then I'm going to push the pipe back into the top. As far as that will go and then we can clip the pipes back into position. Because we've got a little bit of movement in the clips we can actually turn that all the way around to the side should you wish to do so. We now need to choose a suitable location for the switch. The switch can actually be located up to two meters away from the stop tab. You do also get four screws in the kit. They will be okay for surface mounting on wood, but not much good for anything else. You also get three clips and this special tool to disconnect the tubes. And you also get those instructions which you need to keep in a safe place. How you fix this to the wall will depend on how your wall is constructed. So this is the pipe that came with the kit. And this is two meters long. You can actually cut this to size should you wish to do so. Simply pull the tubes out of the sheathing and then you can cut the sheathing and then you can cut the pipe to size. This actually comes with this attached to the switch which tells you that the actual bit sticking out from the sheathing needs to be 90 mil and that both of these are already pre-cut to 90 mil. Obviously, if we measure that on there, that is nowhere near 90 mil. Just get the other end, and that is an absolute mile away from 90 mil. So before we install this pipe, we're going to trim both of these pieces of pipe back to 90 mil. So we're just going to put that on there, and we'll just mark both of those at 90 mil. And then we'll just cut those using a plastic pipe cutter. You can of course conceal this in partition walls etc should you wish to do so or you can surface mount it. Okay I'm going to mark those at 90mm and then trim those off.
At the back there, there is space to put a cable tie, so we're just going to put that in there. Then going to push the two tubes up. Push the sheathing through the hole. We're going to ensure that that tightens around the sheathing. These tubes will actually go into the fitting by 12 millimeters. So I'm just going to mark that onto the tubing and then we ensure that they are fully home. Obviously when you do fix this to the wall, it is a good idea to use four screws. I've actually only used two in this fixing because I've actually screwed directly into a stud. You can now pull the cable tie tight. And then we can take the tubing and we can push that into position, ensuring it goes all the way in. And you will feel it stop. So just check for the witness marks. You can actually see that they are fully home. So we just need to do the same with the tube on the other side. We're not going to push that back into position until we've done the commissioning of the shoe stop. Now at the valve end, we just need to connect up the two four millimeter pipes. And obviously you need to mark these 12 millimeters in so as you can see that they are fully home. We now just need to take those and push those in and tuning the go all the way home. We can now slowly open the main stop valve. So that is back to where it was before. As you can see the shoe stop is in the off position. We can now just flick that on. We can then switch that on at the switch. And switch it off, you simply switch it back off. Once we've checked that's working a few times, we can then carefully push the pipes into the box, ensuring we don't trap them, and then we can simply click that into position. If you have installed one of these previously and you've had a good or a bad experience with it, I would appreciate it if you could post in the comments below and let me know. I hope you found this video useful. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.